Hey guys, today I want to talk about life after the military, how to scale your veterans, your military experience. There's a few things I know now that I didn't know when I went through the ACAP ETS process, and I would like to get a redo. I guess my redo is sharing this information with you and seeing you, you succeed type if, if you're that type of person that want to start your own company and don't want to really work for anybody else want to kind of take it to the next level i would start my business a year out okay i would also make sure that everything that's wrong with me any injuries that i've had in the military that is annotated into my medical records I will start building relationships with the current prime vendors and subcontractors and suppliers that's already on site doing work. It can be a Dell, it can be an NVIDIA, it can be a Juniper, it can be a major prime contract, it can be a Boeing, Lockheed Martin. Those are the guys that's going to help you scale and catapult it to the next level in this federal realm. Um, go back to the medical records. Once you get out, make sure that you have your medical records package, take it to the VA and file your claim. Before you file your claim, understand what you're filing. Go to the CFR 38. You can't take a test without studying. The CFR 38 is going to tell you, okay, if I have an elbow injury, if you, if your elbow injury have this range of motion, then from zero to 30%, this is what you could see. So you want to make sure you study the CFR 38 and it will guide you. The reason I'm telling you this is because there's a certain percentage that would allow your company to qualify for service disabled veteran owned small business versus veteran owned small business. You want to get a minimum of 30%. So you could participate with that service disabled veteran owned small business set aside. When I say set aside, go back to a few of my other videos and they talk about the various different set asides, 8A, woman owned, hub zone, disadvantaged woman on and things like that. So you may you may you may also be able to capture other set aside service disabled veteran on woman on if you live in a hub zone and your company is set up in a hub zone. But I'm really emphasizing service disabled veteran on set aside because it's fresh it's fresh off the press. You're about to ETS and you want to capture that while you're still in uniform. Okay. So you're a year out, you're short, you're starting a cap Reach out to your Apex Accelerators. Get involved with your local contracting community. Join SANE.org. Go to ASAUSA. Join their umbrella. Get involved. Start going to these conferences to build your relationship. Once you build your relationship, make note of it. So when it's time to scale, you, you can hit the ground running when you ETS. I'm going to show you my perspective on this. Uh, how I see this from an 88 Mike point of view perspective. In Iraq, I was 88 Mike, South Baghdad, and my team and I, we pulled a lot of convoy security. So our mission was to get whoever we was transporting to and fro safely. Sometimes we would use a Humvee to do security for a convoy. Sometimes we would drive LMTVs if we were transport, transporting people and supplies. Sometimes we would drive a PLS or LHS if we were transporting ammunition. But there are multiple vehicles for the mission. You just have to know how to drive those vehicles. So in the Army, that's what I did. I drove those vehicles. Well, these the set-aside program are called contract vehicles. It's the same concept. In the Army, we, we would have a safety briefing. We would check all the PPE. We would check everybody's stuff. We would So if you correlate that to the contracting process, when you first get a job, you're going to have your submittal process, your schedule of values. You're going to go through that first safety briefing phase. Then when you get on site, you're going to have to have your safety briefings. OK, so now you've got the relationship with your prime contractors and your vendors. You're using that vehicle to get your prime contractors and vendors, which are your supplies or whatnot, to the end user. OK, so once you get that, your prime contractors and your, your, your vendors to the end user or you hire a subcontractor to complete your job. You're going to have a, a an accountability briefing once you get to the job site to make sure everybody's there, all the items are there, and then you're going to have a quick AAR after after, after action review. The concept still applies. When the project is over in the federal contractor space, you're going to have closeout documents that you're going to have to submit. So you're going to. 
be doing the same thing, just a different concept with different vehicles. And you could take the process that you already know on how to manage the flow of a contract and a job. You don't have to know everything. The relationships are everything. It might take one one relationship to get your whole company going. So build those relationships now while you're in and take it out into the federal contracting world. The sky's the limit to you guys. You don't have to be afraid. This process is the same process that you do. You're just playing in a different space versus having a uniform on. So don't be afraid. Get your percentage. Get your company started. Apex accelerators. Go to score. Scale your business. Get in the environment and ask the right questions. If you have any questions, drop a few notes at the bottom of this video. Click like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The process is the process. Get involved. Happy Resurrection Day, guys.